osteochondroma. It is a surface lesion that arises from the surface of the bone and continues with the medullary cavity. It arises from a trapped growth plate cartilage that herniates through the cortex and goes via the endochondral ossification beneath the periosteum. The cartilaginous cap produces the bony mass by progressive endochondral ossification. It is the most common benign bone tumor. Presentation, mass, swelling, pain or discomfort. The pain can occur from the bursa or mechanical impingement. Actually can impinge the muscles that tend on the nerve or vessels. Or the pain can occur from fracture of the stock. Location, distal femur. Proximal tibia, proximal femur, proximal humerus. But it can occur in any bone in which endochondral ossification occurs. Metaphysis, for example. The growth of the osteochondroma parallel growth in the patient. Lesion stop growing when the physis closes. Most patients have solitary lesion. X-ray, the cortex or medullary cavity are continuous. They can be sessile or pedunculated. The sessile, the base is wider. Sessile lesions are associated with a higher risk of malignancy. The pedunculated type, you have a narrow stock, usually grow away from the joint. The osteochondroma often arise at the site of tendon insertion, the direction of the growth along the line of the tendon. MRI will show the cartilage cap better. The cap is usually 2 to 3 mm in thickness. The cap may be 1 cm in growing child. The thicker cap indicates growth, but not a reliable indicator of malignant transformation. The patient may have a bursa on top of the lesion. The bursa may have calcified or ossified loose bodies. The cartilaginous cap is made of hyaline cartilage and it has chondrocytes that are benign with single nucleus, usually arranged in cluster in parallel, similar to the physis. If the cartilage cap becomes thicker in adult, more than 2 cm, then rule out chondrosarcoma. Another topic called multiple hereditary exostosis. Lesions are similar in X-ray appearance and histologically to the solitary osteochondroma. You may have metaphysial widening and sessile lesions. Inheritance, it is normal dominant with incomplete penetrance in female, that's why it's more common in males. Genetic mutation, EXT1, EXT2, EXT3. In EXT1, there will be more severe presentation, like more limb malalignment, and decrease range of motion of the knee and elbow. Not only you will have more severe presentation, but also you have more exostosis and more malignancy than in EXT2. Malignant transformation, the solitary is less than 1%, the multiple is about 10%. Proximal lesions tend to undergo more malignant transformation than distal lesions. If it transforms to malignant, then the lesion will be low-grade chondral shark, usually of the pelvis. 
presentation of multiple hereditary exostoses. Short stature, then skeletal deformities. The site of limb deformities is usually the knee, the forearm, and the ankle. You can find coxa valga, knee valgus, with short fibula and patella dislocation. You can also find ankle valgus due to short fibula. You can also find short femur. In the upper extremity, you will find radial bowing. The ulna will be short, the radial head dislocated, and the ulnar deviation of the hand. This condition can be treated by osteotomy and exostosis excision. This condition is similar to meddling deformity. Then the malignant transformation. Clinically, in new pain, sudden increase in size, you will get low-grade chondrosart, usually occurs in the scapula and the pelvis. You need to assess the cartridge cap. The MRI will show the cap to be bright. It will care more in the sessile type. You will find an area of lucency or destruction of the base of the osteochondroma or destruction of the adjacent bone, or you find calcified soft tissue mass. It usually occurs in older patients. And the differential diagnosis is the paraosteal osteosarc and myositis ossificans. Treatment. Treatment is observation if the patient is asymptomatic. If there is pain or if there is cosmetic deformity or decrease or loss of range of motion, a simple excision is usually done after skeletal maturity. You need to be aware of loss of pronation and spination in the forearm in these cases, and simple excision of the osteochondroma is usually the answer. The last indication is wide surgical excision in case of secondary chondrosarcoma. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.